Good day everyone! Welcome to English for Academic and Professional Purposes class. It's me, again, Teacher Jade Nicole Rivera from Santa Maria Integrated High School, Division of Laguna. Previously, we have discussed Lesson 3, Academic Reading Strategies. So, we have different reading strategies, namely, Clarify, Connect, Evaluate, Predict, question and visualize and also we have discussed the different purposes of reading so we have to scan to skim to write to critic to learn and to understand now in lesson four we will be discussing various techniques in summarizing a variety of academic texts so after this lesson you were expected to define summarizing Identify the various techniques in summarizing and summarize texts. So many of us do not really like summarizing, like what we do in schools. But oftentimes, we tend to do it in our daily lives. When? We do summarizing when we are retelling a movie to a friend. Okay, you always do summarizing when you recall how your day was. And also... You do summarizing when you are telling stories about your love life. So what is summarizing? According to Buckley, summarizing is reducing text to one-third or one-quarter its original size, clearly articulating the author's meaning and retaining main ideas. And according to Hacker, it involves stating a work's thesis and main ideas simply, briefly, and accurately. So in short, when you summarize, you were taking a lot of information and you create a condensed version of it. But be sure that you cover the main points and you express the most important facts or ideas in a short and clear form. So here are some tips in summarizing. Number one, read the work first to understand the author's intent. So this is a crucial step because an incomplete reading could lead to an inaccurate summary. So be sure to read the work first. Number two, organize all ideas. So you will fully understand what the document is when you organize all ideas. Okay, so you may use cause and effect charts, timelines, also Venn diagrams, templates for outlines, and so on. And then third, analyze the text. Think what information you will put in your summary. So be sure to cover the main points and arguments of the document. And then number four, paraphrase or restate the words into different ones. So this is very important. You should avoid using the original words of the author. Instead, Use your own vocabulary, but be sure to retain the author's intent. So remember, paraphrasing is a way to avoid plagiarism. And then last, write down all information in a coherent and precise form. So keep in mind that a summary is a condensed version of the original paper. So avoid making it too long. So, here are other techniques in summarizing. So, we have four. The first technique is what we call, somebody wanted but so then. So, this technique is an excellent summarizing strategy for stories. So, somebody wanted but so then starts with somebody. Who is this story about? Wanted. What does the main character want? But. Identify a problem that the main character encountered. How does the main character solve the problem? And then, tell how the story ends. Well, let's have an example. In the story Little Red Riding Hood, who is the story about? It's Little Red Riding Hood. Wanted, she wanted to take cookies to her sick grandmother. But, what is the problem that... Little Red Riding Hood encountered, she encountered a wolf pretending to be her grandmother. 
So, she ran away crying for help. And then, tell how the story ends. A woodsman heard her and saved her from the wolf. Let us put them all together to form a short summary of Little Red Riding Hood. So let us put them all together to form the summary of Little Red Riding Hood. Little Red Riding Hood wanted to take cookies to her sick grandmother, but she encountered a wolf. The wolf got to her grandmother's house first and pretended to be the old woman. He was going to eat Little Red Riding Hood, but she realized what he was doing and ran away, crying for help. A woodsman heard the girl's cries and saved her from the wolf. Okay, so that is the first technique. Now let us move on to the second technique, which is called the Sa'ak method. Okay, so Sa'ak stands for state, name of the article, book or story, assign, the name of the author, action, what the author is doing, it may be tells, explains, okay? And then complete, complete the sentence or summary with keywords and important details. Okay, so here is an example of an article. So state, the article is titled, A Position Paper of Drug Testing of High School and College Students. So, assign the author or the writer is Kyle Cabezas. And then, action. What is the author doing in the article? The author is arguing. Okay, so action is argues. And then, complete. The importance of drug testing to high school and college students to help reduce and stop the increasing amount of young drug users in schools, universities, and state colleges. Okay, so let us put them all together to form the short summary of the position paper of drug testing of high school and college students. Okay, so here is the summary. A position paper of drug testing of high school and college students by Kyle Cabezas argues the importance of drug testing to high school and college students to help reduce and stop the increasing amount of young drug users in schools, universities, and state colleges. Okay, next we have technique number three. Five W's, one H. Who? Who is the story about? What? What did they do? When? When did the action take place? Where? Where did the story happen? Why? Why did the main character do what he or she did? And how? How did the main character do what he or she did? So these are the six crucial questions. Let us have an example. Who? The third is. What? He raised a quick, boastful hair and won. When? When isn't specified in this story, so that's okay. Where? In an old country road. Why? The third is was tired of hearing the hair boast about his speed. And how? The third is kept up his slow but steady pace. So let us put them all together to form the summary of the tortoise and the hare. Tortoise got tired of listening to hare boast about how fast he was. So he challenged hare to a race. Even though he was slower than hare, Tortoise won by keeping up his slow and steady pace when hare stopped and take a nap. There you go. Let's have the last technique. First, then, finally. This technique helps students summarize events in chronological order. What happened first? You may include the main character and main event or action. And then, what key details took place during the event or action? Finally, what were the results of the event or action? 
Okay, so let's have an example. This is entitled as the Goldilocks and the Three Bears. So, first, Goldilocks entered the bears' home while they were gone. Then, she ate their food, sat in their chairs, and slept in their beds. Finally, she woke up to find the bears watching her, so she jumped up and ran away. Let us have all of them together to form the summary of Goldilocks and the Three Bears. First, Goldilocks entered the bears' home while they were gone. Then, she ate their food, sat in their chairs, and slept in their beds. Finally, she woke up to find the bears watching her, so she jumped and ran away. There you go! For your homework, recall one of the articles, novels, or short stories you have read. Then, on a one-half crosswise paper, rewrite or summarize it by using one of the previously mentioned summarizing techniques. For your summarizing activity, here are the criteria in scoring. We have the content, organization, clarity, and mechanics. Thank you for listening. See you again in our next episode in English for Academic and Professional Purposes. Keep learning, keep growing. Bye!